Hey, what's happening guys? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back and today, let's talk a little bit about Dead Cells. So Dead Cells is this tiny little indie game that some of you guys may have heard of. Of course, let's get some of this part out of the way. Obviously, Dead Cells has been in the news quite a bit over the past two weeks for reasons that really aren't so great. And we're obviously all very familiar with that situation. It is all very unfortunate, but through that, a lot of attention did get brought to Dead Cells, the video game, and I think that that's great news. It made a lot of people more aware of the game. Part of the controversy and scandal that sort of happened around it was also kind of about how good the game was and the high scores that the game was getting. So now, a lot of us have been more familiar with this title. It's been out for a couple of weeks. I myself finally picked up the physical copy, which arrived from Amazon just a couple of days. So I've been playing it for about three days or so, two or three days. I've put in many, many hours so far, and I am enamored by this game. So I kind of wanted to talk about it and discuss my impressions with you guys. So first and foremost, I have to echo a sentiment I said a second ago. I am enamored with Dead Cells, you guys. So wonderful. I cannot stop thinking about this game. I cannot stop playing it on that little bit of free time that I have. And, uh, you know, many people are already familiar with this part. It is a Metroidvania type of game in terms of gameplay, but it also is what's considered a roguelike because it does use procedurally generated worlds and you have essentially one life and every time you die you go back to the beginning and you lose a lot of the progress you, you've gained but what's really cool about this game is it does introduce a lot of mechanics where there is a level of progression there are some items and abilities and upgrades that you do can continue to keep and continue to use to upgrade more things that will be made available to you every time you die and restart the game now i have no problem telling you guys that i am not really a fan of the roguelike genre and that very idea of dying and losing everything and going back to the beginning and i don't think that dark souls counts as that because some people might say oh but rob you love dark souls and bloodborne and when you die you lose a lot of your stuff and there is some truth to that, but I think that they ultimately operate on very different levels, and so I don't consider those quite the same thing. So while I may not be a big fan of the roguelike kind of experience, I am, of course, a huge fan of the Metroidvania kind of experience. And the fact that that was a huge part of the actual physical gameplay while controlling your character of this game always had me excited. Of course, the visual style looked great. It does have that sort of Metroid look and feel to it. So I was very excited. And then when the whole scandal broke, it's like, well, now there's even more attention on this game. And I feel like I really don't want to pass this up. So I was stoked to pick up my physical copy. So really quickly, I wanted to start off and discuss the visuals of the game a little bit because, oh my goodness, this game is gorgeous. And I am so enamored with the fact that right now in gaming with this indie scene and this sort of retro refresh that we're all that we're all experiencing, that there's a lot of fantastic pixel art games coming out and some of them look so great. And this one is no exception. It's it's one of, if not maybe the best pixel art game I've seen, but there's also a lot that I don't typically play. This one, however, really catches my eye and they do a great job building the ambience and the atmosphere. There's plenty of variety between the different areas and locations that you're going. The animation is out of this world and it's even kind of cool because in some way they managed to infuse a lot of like character and humor into the character that you're playing like the dead guy that's like a a little weird slimy spirit that just moves from dead body to dead body and whatever weird story they're kind of telling here but um he interacts with a lot of things in his environment and uh, with other characters and npcs you might come across and he he acts out a lot of things and motions and activities and responses to things that people are saying to him and he gives thumbs thumbs up and he'll like shake his head no like i'm afraid of something or whatever and say some funny line and it's just amazing how with so little they're able to translate so much about what he's saying and feeling and thinking and a lot of times it's genuinely funny with very little dialogue and not a whole lot going on they manage to make it really funny and i think it's kind of a testament to the art direction and the animation just the way this game looks it is so fantastic. And like I said, as, as an old school gamer and somebody who loves, I mean loves to death, the 16-bit era of gaming, I really am enjoying all these games that are coming out trying to emulate that feel. And I think that this one does a great job considering it's trying to be like a Metroidvania kind of thing. So it's got like a Metroid or Castlevania sort of look and feel to it amongst many other old school games. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, I do want to get into the thick of things and talk about the gameplay, because that is the real meat and hook of this game. And let me tell you guys, it does not disappoint. I am floored by how fun it is to play this game and how absolutely excellent the controls are. If the controls in a game like this weren't absolutely pitch perfect, with one minor exception that I'll get into, if they weren't otherwise pitch perfect, this game would 
almost fall apart, and luckily that is not the case. It really is fantastic. You're dealing with a, with a collection of weapons based on color. There's red weapons, there's purple weapons, there's green weapons. I actually haven't even found an actual green weapon. I have found green sub-weapons, because there are sub-weapons you can get like grenades or traps, uh, little disc shooter things that will just like automatically fire at enemies for a period of time. And between this, you're constantly picking up and collecting different kinds of weapons. You have Typically, what I've seen so far, the red weapons are like swords and daggers and, you know, bladed kind of weapons that you're slashing with. Uh, the, the purple weapon I tend to always try to keep on me is a bow and arrow. And there's a variety of weapons between all these different kinds. And there's dual daggers and there's swords. There's bow and arrows. There's double bow and arrows. Uh, there's other, like, weird... There's, uh, it's, it's like a, uh, vial of fire or something that you're throwing at somebody. I picked up one time and I tried. I didn't like it, but I was like, oh, wow, this is a whole nother web weapon type that I didn't even know was going to be in this game. Kind of like Molotov cocktails, I think is what I was trying to say, but but also not exactly. And it's just like, there's just so much going on with the weapon variety. And the way you can pick which weapon you want to assign to which button, when you're picking up upgrades throughout the game, you can upgrade based on the color. So certain colors are going to get the upgrade if it's a red weapon or if it's uh, the, the purple, which is considered tactical. It's, it's just really great and super well executed. So you've got your attack with the red weapon, you've got your attack with the purple weapon, which is probably going to be a bow and arrow or some kind of long distance weapon. You've got your sub weapons, which are mapped to your Z and LR buttons on the Nintendo Switch, of course. And you've also got a dodge, which will become your best friend. This roll dodge thing is absolutely a lifesaver because it does make you invincible, which does feel very Dark Souls, by the way, to be able to do that. It makes you invincible and some enemies get so insanely freaking hard and you're heart will be beating through your chest hoping you're not going to die and if you can master rolling like through the enemy to the other side and quickly getting a bunch of jabs in on the other side and then rolling back and anticipating when their attacks are going to come it really can become almost euphoric you kind of just zone into this game and you start moving quick and thinking fast and you're rolling and you're dodging and you're attacking and you're sticking and you're moving and you're rolling and it can be really really exhilarating it really puts a lot of control in the player's hand that's what this gameplay does so well that some of you know some of the best games like this do a lot of nintendo's games like donkey kong country for example those games work because as hard as they are nintendo puts all the control in the player's hand and it's up to you to be good at it the same thing is true with dead cells and in a game that operates in a metroidvania kind of fashion it's really exciting and and speaking of the metroidvania thing the layout of the levels while procedurally generated are fantastic you can warp between sections as you go and unlock warp stones which i think is really fantastic and super helpful and it does have that sort of exploration backtracking discovery you're upgrading your abilities and your weapons and your move sets and you can go back to previous eras areas and suddenly you can get to a new platform that you couldn't before i mean clearly that's the kind of thing that just speaks to me and i couldn't be happier with how well this game is executing all of this but that also leads us into the other element i wanted to talk about which is the difficulty of the game and how that factors into like the roguelike nature of the gameplay because exploring and backtracking and upgrading is all great and fine and dandy and we all love it but in a game where your death takes away a lot of what you've already achieved how do they manage to make that work and not really frustrate and defeat the player and still manage to be a somehow in freaking credible game? And it's, it's a tricky balance and it's kind of tough for me to put into words, but they just found a way to do it. I think that what happens, what happens is as you go through every level, you're collecting souls from enemies that you're, that you're, or cells I should say, sorry, I'm so used to Dark Souls. You're collecting cells after defeating enemies and when you manage to make it through an area and you find a door that's going to take you to the next area, you have this little kind of interim space you go to where you where you get to do some upgrading and some leveling up. And what's great is you use these cells to kind of unlock different weapons or abilities or new things that you might start with every time you die and restart. And that's where the magic comes in because all of that stuff that you unlock are permanent uplocks. So maybe you unlock you know, a variety of different bow and arrows you're going to start with the first time you pick up a bow and arrow. And as long as you put in that 50 or 60 cells after a couple of cycles, then you unlock that. Suddenly, every time you restart the game, you're going to be able to pick up a better bow and arrow that you've had previously instead of just the crappy first one. And so your weapons and your items that you can use and start with from the beginning, even when you die and have to restart, can continue to get upgraded. 
So it feels like, wow, I got this really incredible sword last time after playing so far and then dying. I hate the fact that I lost that great sword. Well, if you do enough upgrading between areas, you will eventually unlock the ability to sometimes start with that new sword. Or bow and arrow, or whatever the case. Like I said, the main weapons I've found have been swords, the dual daggers, and bow and arrows. So there's obviously a lot I still have to, to discover in this game. But it's, it's really clever, and it's really smart, so that it doesn't feel like you're not achieving anything. I mean, if you weren't getting, gaining some level of progression, it would just be a waste. It just wouldn't be fun to play so far and then die and lose it all every single time. And luckily, this also applies to permanent abilities that you get. There are some upgrades and abilities that you'll get throughout the game that also will be permanent. Every time you die and restart, you'll still have that ability. Such as the little kind of like slime puddles that at first you don't know what to do with them. You can just like tickle them and they don't do anything. But eventually you'll unlock the ability to turn them into a vine that shoots straight up. And it'll help you get to an area or a platform that you couldn't otherwise reach. That is a permanent ability. So even when you die, once you've unlocked that, you always have it. And so you'll die and go back to the first area. But suddenly in the first area where there are slime things you couldn't do anything with. Now you can activate them to make that vine. And there's another one I've unlocked where there's like these warp st warp stones that are different than the different than the typical ones that that every map allows you to do. They're different warp stones that get you into secret areas. And I've unlocked the ability to activate that, so now I can do that from the beginning every time I die, and I'll never lose that ability. So all in all, the way they factor the upgrading into the death of the roguelike sort of, you know, one respawn and then you go back to the beginning thing is just really well executed because it doesn't make it so frustrating that you don't want to keep playing. And every time I die, even though I'm sad about it, I still think, well, I still made some progress. I still was unloading some cells into some new abilities or weapons that I'm going to unlock permanently. So every time I'm playing this game and restarting, I'm still maintaining some level of progress. And I still have the ability to create those vines to climb, and I still have those warp stones that I can use for secret areas. And none of that stuff has gone away. So I'm still compelled to want to play every time I die and go back to the beginning. It's like, well, let's see how far I can make it this time and keep up unlocking and upgrading new stuff. It's just the ultimate package. They just, the, the developer of the game, Motion Twin, did something so special. They enabled the player with such great combat that, and something I like about the combat too, going back to this, because it feels so good to control your character and to fight enemies, is, it, is, is that it feels so good that it can make you kind of overconfident in your skills, but the game is also set up in a way to punish you for your overconfidence. So while you want to just start kind of ripping and tearing through this game and you're moving fast, you're jumping around, you're climbing vines and you're just moving like it's nobody's business, attacking enemies here and there, you'll get so confident you want to move faster and faster like you can't be stopped. But the game will quickly remind you, hey, you may think you're good, but this game will punish you and beat you down if you move too quick, if you're too cocky, and you're going to regret it because you're going to die and go back to the beginning, and you're going to lose some of the progress that you've made. So you don't want to do that. So it's a great balance they've struck between empowering the player with great controls and combat, but still punishing you if you get too cocky and overconfident. So you really need to find that perfect balance as a player to traverse this game through it well and to actually be good at the game. And it's just awesome, you guys. This is one of my favorite games I've ever played. I can say that after only having it for two or three days and playing it for maybe four or five hours so far, it's amazing. One of my favorite games. I am so impressed. And while I'm very regretful about the controversy and scandal that happened around this game for a variety of reasons, I do have to say I am also grateful that it's put so much more attention on this game than already was on it. I mean, this game deserves the attention. I'm also very thankful as somebody who doesn't play a lot of indie games and somebody who doesn't really buy downloadable games, you guys know, I am so happy that there was a physical copy of this game available so close to the release so that I can have an actual game box and an actual game cartridge for my Nintendo Switch of this game. That's how I love my games. I don't care if other people hate it and think it's dumb. I like it, and I'm really glad that Dead Cells also came physical. And at this point, I think I've raved enough. It's just a wonderful game that I recommend everyone try. Yes, it's hard, but it also does give you great controls and a lot of abilities that allow you to get better if you hone your skills. Just like Dark Souls, just like games like God of War and stuff like that, if you get good at the game, you can do better. It's not about the game allowing you to do it. It's about the game giving you the tools to be good at it and to do better and to get all the way to the end. So I can't recommend it enough, you guys. I love this game. 
and you should all try it and you should all play it. So I want to hear what you guys have to say. Have you been playing this game? Do you love it as much as me? Do you think it's maybe not as good as me or other people are saying? Maybe you haven't tried it, but now you're considering checking it out. If my video helped you in some way, I would love to know about that. Please discuss this absolute masterpiece of an indie game. So thankful for what Motion Twin did. Dead Cells is amazing. Please play it. And that is going to be it for me today. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob Overlook with you, and I'll catch you next time on another video.